Hey guys, today we're going to talk about some trigonometric identities and how we can either easily derive them or have a quick little way to memorize them. So the first one that we're going to look at are the Pythagorean identities. So these mainly come from the unit circle. So recall that the unit circle is a circle centered at the origin with a radius of 1. If I have a point that lies on the unit circle, that point xy can also be represented as cosine theta comma sine theta, which means that if I drop an altitude from that point xy down to the x-axis and create a nice little right triangle, that means that this distance here is cosine theta and this height is sine theta. If cosine theta and sine theta are representative of two sides of my right triangle and the one is the hypotenuse, I can plug those three things into just regular old Pythagorean's theorem. So I can say that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to one squared, which is just one. There you go. There is your first Pythagorean identity. From there, there are two other Pythagorean identities that we have to know. The first Pythagorean identity that we can get, I just find by dividing the entire equation above by sine squared theta. So that looks like this. If I have sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1, I'm going to divide everything in this equation by sine squared. When I do that division out, sine squared divided by sine squared is 1. Cosine squared divided by sine squared is cotan squared. And 1 over sine squared is equal to cosecant squared. So 1 plus cotan squared theta is equal to cosecant squared theta. That's my second Pythagorean identity. My last Pythagorean identity I can get by dividing that original equation by cosine squared theta. So if I start with sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. I divide everything in that equation by cosine squared. When I simplify, sine squared divided by cosine squared is tan squared. Cosine squared divided by cosine squared is 1. And 1 over cosine squared is equal to secant squared. There is my third and final Pythagorean identity. Here's the deal. I do not memorize these two. I don't have the space in my brain for it. So I memorized just this easy one, sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. And I remember that I can divide the whole thing by sine squared easily to get this identity. And then I can divide the whole thing by cosine squared to get my other identity. So there's really no need to memorize these two. As long as you can memorize this, these two can easily be found. If getting from here to here or from here to here, so using those quotient identities and those reciprocal identities were a little bit tricky. There's another video that you can check out, quotient and reciprocal identities, that explains all of that for you. So feel free to go back and check that video out. I'll link it in the comments below. The next trick identities that we're going to look at are the sum and difference identities. A lot of times these are the identities that kids have the hardest time memorizing. The proofs or the derivations for these are hard. It's either an imaginary complex number proof or a crazy geometric triangle proof, neither of which you would be able to replicate on a test quick enough to help you figure these out. So for these two, we're going to use a quick little mnemonic they're called. So for the first one, I remember this as sine is something. Yes, I spelt something, S-U-M. That switches. This is my hint that when I'm writing for sine of a plus b and sine of a minus b, that the plus is going to go with a plus and then the minus is going to go with a minus. The switching comes from I'm going to have sine a cosine b plus, and now I'm going to switch sine b cosine a. So I switch the variables that I'm taking the sine and the cosine of. I'm then going to copy this exact equation for sine a minus b. The only thing that changes is that minus sign in the middle. So sine a cosine b minus sine b cosine a. There's my sum and my difference formula for sine. For cosine, this is just opposite. So cosine is opposite. 
rather than a plus going with a plus like it did in sine, it's going to be a minus in the middle. Rather than having sine, cosine, sine, cosine, these ones are going to stay the same and it's going to start with cosine. So I'm going to have cosine A, cosine B minus sine A, sine B. Again, Cosine is opposite, so rather than a minus, I'm going to have a plus, and then these stay the same. Cosine A, cosine B, plus sine A, sine B. The last set of identities that we're going to talk about are the double angle identities. So we're going to first start with sine of 2 theta. These identities are going to be easy to figure out from the sum and difference identities that we just talked about. So if I'm taking sine of 2 theta, that means I'm taking sine of theta plus theta, right? Theta plus theta is equal to 2 theta. If I apply that sum formula that we talked about just before, I know that this is going to be equal to sine theta cosine theta plus sine theta cosine theta. If I have two of the same terms, I can just write it as two of that. So sine of 2 theta is going to be equal to 2 sine theta cosine theta. So there is our first double angle identity. We're also going to talk about cosine of 2 theta. Same as sine of 2 theta, I can write that as cosine of theta plus theta. Applying the cosine of a plus b formula that we talked about on the previous page, I know that this is equal to cosine theta cosine theta minus sine theta sine theta. With that being said, I can multiply these out and multiply these out. So this is now equal to cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. So one way that I can represent cosine 2 theta is cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. I'm mostly going to be using these identities when I'm either trying to simplify a complex trigonometric expression and or if I'm solving a trigonometric equation. A lot of times this form isn't going to be super helpful. So what I might want to use is the fact that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. So we talked about that on the first slide. If I move stuff around in this equation, I know that sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cosine squared. So that's just if I subtract the cosine squared over. And I also know that cosine squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared. Again, if I just subtract the sine squared over. If I first take this piece, sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cosine squared. If I sub in for sine squared in my cosine of 2 theta equation, I have cosine squared theta minus that sine squared becomes 1 minus cosine squared. If I distribute that negative sign, I get minus 1 plus cosine squared. So cosine 2 theta is now equal to 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. This is often a, an easier, I would say, or more convenient form to use because it'll take a cosine 2 theta and replace it with a cosine squared. This 2 theta is usually pretty tricky when it's in an expression or an equation and you're gonna wanna get rid of it and get it to look something like this. Your other option is to take that cosine 2 theta formula that was originally cosine squared minus sine squared and rather than substituting in for the sine squared like we did in here, I can instead substitute in for the cosine squared. So if I substitute in for cosine squared, I know that's equal to 1 minus sine squared. And then I bring down that minus sine squared. So now I know that cosine 2 theta is also equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. So now I have three different ways that I can represent cosine of 2 theta. Cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. 2 cosine squared theta minus 1, and 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Again, these two end up being the ones that we'll use more often just because they're more convenient than this form. That's it for the Pythagorean identities, sum and difference identities, and the double angle identities. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Have a great day.